Well, it was our opinion, and I think we proved it, that this family began to come up with these allegations of molestation and conspiracy only when they realized that they were on the way out, that Michael Jackson was sick of them, didn't want to deal with them anymore, didn't want them on his property. They were calling him daddy. They, uh, they appeared to want a future with Michael Jackson that he didn't want with them. So our theory was that as soon as they realized they were being eased out, they needed to do something else to stay involved in his life and get a big payday, and this is what they came up with. We only call witnesses we thought had something important to tell a jury, and that includes the celebrities we call. Now, Jay Leno was interviewed by the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department and secretly recorded by the sheriffs. He didn't know he was being recorded. And he told them words to the effect that this family had contacted him that the 13-year-old accuser had tried repeatedly to get through to him and that finally he had a conversation with him. He said that the 13-year-old sounded, you know, overly rehearsed, sounded scripted. There seemed to be a woman in the background, you know, directing what he said. And he got a bad feeling about what this young man was saying to him. And he thought they wanted money, although they didn't actually ask for it. And after that conversation, he told the staff not to let them put any calls through to him again. Now, just so you know, uh, his lawyer didn't want him to testify. And when I first called his lawyer, uh, his lawyer tried to say that he didn't remember what had happened. And I told his lawyer that we had a recording of the phone call, and his lawyer was shocked to hear that because he didn't know there had been a secret recording, nor had he heard it. And I said, maybe you'd like me to send it to you. And I sent it to him, and I said, look, we're going to subpoena him. He can get on the stand, and if he doesn't remember, we're going to refresh his recollection with this recording. And I don't think that's the way you want this to happen. Now, George Lopez was called by the prosecution. If he, they hadn't called him, we were going to, to talk about their efforts to get money from him, even going so far as to accuse him of stealing money from the child's wallet. Uh, Chris Tucker had interacted with this family on numerous occasions. He felt they took him for a ride. You know, I remember him telling me when I first met him that he was told this child had cancer. He wanted to help them out. He invited them to the set in Las Vegas of Rush Hour One. He thought they would spend a day, and they ended up spending, I think it was 10 days or two weeks, and, and billing him for the entire amount. And he went to Michael Jackson in Florida and said, be careful, something's wrong. You know, Michael Jackson used to have a rule that every time he gave a concert around the world, he would visit a children's hospital to be as, as good to children and as kind to them as, as possible. He wanted to help this child overcome cancer, and he took great pride in the fact that he had had something to do with this child going into remission and beating cancer. He never saw the forces of darkness that were circling his life, and it's just, uh, it's very sad.